What's up, freaks? This rip was brought to you by River. River's a Bitcoin company built by Bitcoiners for Bitcoiners the right way. There's no trusted third parties. They build all their infrastructure. They have free DCA because they know it's the best way to buy Bitcoin. So if you want to buy Bitcoin, you want to mine Bitcoin, you want to send Bitcoin over the Lightning Network, you want to plug into their Lightning Network API. If you're a developer, they're building all these tools for you. They also encourage self-custody. Again, they're Bitcoiners. They want to provide an on-ramp for you and then teach you and encourage you to take control of your own Bitcoin. And they're doing this. It's a beautiful company. If you do hold Bitcoin on the exchange, you can know for sure, since they don't rely on any third parties, they don't lend your Bitcoin out, they don't speculate with your Bitcoin, your Bitcoin is held in a multi-sig wallet with 100% reserves. Okay, so go to river.com slash TFTC, take advantage of the no fee DCA, you set up your dollar cost average, you don't pay any fees on those buys. If you're a developer, they have their Lightning Network Services API that you can build on, you can send over Lightning, you can mine via river as well uh, you may have your exchange you may be comfortable with it but if you have you tried river yet it's a question you have to ask yourself if the answer is no go try it that's where all the bitcoiners are hanging out that's where i get my bitcoin as well river.com slash tftc thank you guys for listening if you're listening on youtube please subscribe set the notifications up as well we're going to be putting out a lot of content this year uh, if you want to Subscribe to the podcast feed as well. If you're not around your computer or not listening on YouTube, but you want to catch the podcast on the podcasting feeds, subscribe on your favorite podcasting app. And if you want to learn more about Bitcoin, I write a, a newsletter almost daily during the week. Go to tftc.io, subscribe on the website, and you'll get pure signal on Bitcoin, macroeconomics, geopolitics, whatever tickles my fancy that day. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you for supporting the show. If you can subscribe, rate, review, it goes a long way. We're trying to blow this up in 2023. Enjoy the rip. James Polos, how you doing? Hey, Marty, how are you? Doing well. Like I was saying awesome. right before we hit record, you've been uh, highly re requested by a lot of the individuals who listen to this podcast over the, over the last few months. I think um, the signal you're putting out there particularly with your book, Human Forever, um, and the commentary you have on the state of humanity, particularly here in America as we're transitioning into this digital age is a breath of fresh air during very confusing times. Well, they are confusing uh, in some ways, um, intentionally so, and uh, the most important thing is not to... So uh, do my best to keep that up. No, I appreciate it. Um, we lost you there for a second, but just jumping into it, I mean, from your perspective, where do we say what I'm seeing? Uh, this is a Bitcoin focus. We po focus on Bitcoin as a topic because I think it's an imperative as we move into the digital age, we can either get a completely dystopian CBDC slave coin world, or we can get freedom money. Uh, Bitcoin monasteries, as you like to call them, uh, in the future. And then on top of that, we have AI blowing up and really pushing us towards a somewhat transhumanist future. And then we obviously have this oligarchic, kleptocratic political apparatus above us that's really trying to control the narrative and censor people from talking about very important topics. Well, yeah, that's right. Uh, you know, the subtitle of the book is The Digital Politics of Spiritual War. Uh, when it came out uh, at first, there was a little bit of head scratching and now there's just sort of like sad nodding. Um, it is a spiritual war. Uh, slave coin is about right for the CBDCs um, and, and a slave to what? You know, the not just the regime, whatever that turns out to be, although it's obviously, you know, very hungry for the entire planet to planetize uh, control and um and a, a, a servile relationship with that form of control. Um, uh, but it's a slave to, uh, to the, to the world, you know, it's a slave to, uh, the, the machinery of the world, to the logic of the world. Um, and that is, uh, that is a very dark answer indeed to the question of, uh, of, of spiritually how 
we can and must live as as human beings. It's dehumanizing. Uh, it's posthumanizing. Uh, and so, you know, people are casting around for um, for a for shelter, um, for a place where they can be protected uh, and where they can protect. Um, in the case of America, it's not just America, but America is you know very important here. If we lose here, we lose everywhere. Um, uh, to protect the things that matter to most of them, uh, their form of government, uh, their very long-standing way of life, uh, despite all the wild changes over the past 200, 300 years, uh, and ultimately their humanity itself. Uh, you see that the, uh, the CBDC people, the Borg, as I call them, um, are quite serious about using the power of centralized data uh, and digital control to enforce um, a post-human ethic, uh, right down to United is uh, is criminalizing um, any kind of association or speech that uh, runs afoul of um, what the uh, the the priests of this new cyborg order think is uh, is a sacrament of this new uh, regime, this new way of a post-human life that they want to uh, and are and are busy hurting us into, uh, right down from you know from uh, uh, what people insist on calling trans stuff. Well, you know this is transhumanism in action. Uh, it's not everyone becomes a Marvel character. Uh, it's everyone becomes a sort of you know I don't know if you saw any of the Hellraiser films, but you know the the Cenobites. I mean, Cara, Clyde Barker knew what what he was talking about, um, and that's what it is. Uh, ritual disfigurement to uh, to destroy the the sacredness of the the human body and of course the soul within uh, and combine people into um, into a super organism uh, a super cyborg organism uh, so this is this is alarming stuff it is dark it is bad and um, and even if it is going to fail in the end it will do and is already doing profound and in some cases irreversible damage. Uh, to many human beings with no end in sight. So where do you find the protection? Where do you find the shelter? Uh, we have a digital swarm of, of invisible little digital entities that fly through our, our bodies and our you know buildings and our thoughts. And uh, until a handful of years ago, only angels or demons were considered to be capable of doing that. So uh, that's, a, that's a pretty big change. Uh, and in that medium, that disincarnate and, and disincarnating medium of digital technology, uh, sanity doesn't doesn't work very well the way that it used to. Uh, people are are rushing toward insanity as a way of of coping, um, and they're rushing toward a, a centralization of uh, of all those insanities as as so many institutions collapse, so many symbols fall, um, and so what Bitcoin offers. Uh, is a way for uh, for ordinary people uh, right now to once again lay their hands on their tools, stop worshiping their tools, uh, and start using those tools as defensive weapons, uh, as the defensive weapons that, that we need and that we have an inherent right to as human beings uh, to protect all those things uh, that we've been given that are sacred and that we need to survive and thrive in this world. Uh, so that's the point of departure for me. Um, of course, there are details, uh, but uh, you, you know, I, I think that uh, it's the hour is very late, and uh, if, if people don't begin there, uh, they're going to waste uh, a lot of precious time. Agreed. And I think to help contextualize this conversation, you know, I mean, you believe that we're losing our humanity, getting closer to this Borg life. I guess to start, like, how would you define humanity? What makes a human a human? What connections to other individuals, to the to the earth, to the world, to nature, makes us human? And why is that something to cherish and to fight for? Sure. Well, um, you know, even even before the question of of should we cherish it is uh, is it is it our is it our lot in life to be human, right? Uh, are we not in a certain profound way stuck being human, warts and all? Um, and do we not have some kind of duty uh, to accept that? And if we deny that, are we not lying to ourselves uh, with a very old and very evil lie, uh, which only ends in tears? Um, you can go all the way back to Genesis. Uh, and what is, you know, what is that first lie? 
uh, oh, you know, you'll you'll be as gods. Surely you will not die if you eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. It'll be fine. In fact, it'll be better than fine. You will be just like God, maybe even a little bit better. Um, and that's obviously not what happened. Uh, how do we know that's not what happened? Well, you know, uh, we're still not gods. Stuart Brand is still wrong. We are not as gods. Uh, we are human beings, and we'd better get good at that. Um, getting good at that means accepting our given humanity, accepting the sacredness, uh, the goodness of the gift of our humanity, physical, uh, in body, in mind, in heart, in soul, in spirit, um, and uh, and and using uh, ourselves um, singly and together uh, in, in corporate form um, in the way that is uh, most consonant with uh, the, uh, the, the manner in which we were created to live as it is we can live. Uh, I know that sounds a little bit abstract, um, but if you look around for examples of what not to do, uh, I don't know. I mean, it's it's been some time since we've seen so many examples of, of what not to do to yourself and to others as a human being. Yes, less mass murder than in times past. Yes, less firebombing. Okay, that's great. Um, but I don't think there's any, any question anymore that uh, we're living through a, a catastrophe. Um, uh, sperm counts, marriage rates, childbirth rates, uh, prescription drug use, suicides, depression, loneliness, uh, uh, isolation, um, shut-ins, uh, uh, illegal drug abuse, overdoses, um, addictions, uh, uh, self-harm, uh, self-disfiguring. Uh, um, it's all there. Uh, and you, you can walk around in any major city and just look at the people you see, um, homeless or not. Um, and what you see is a profound, profound spiritual illness, despair, uh, uh, misery, confusion, uh, lost souls, um, millions and millions of lost souls, uh, young and old, male and female, um, it's unlike anything that's ever happened to us. And, uh, and so in a world with so many examples of how not to be human, how not to treat your humanity as the sacred gift that it is, um, you know, I think you can kind of practically reason backwards through experience a little bit uh, to understand you know, exactly what it is that we've been given, um, exactly uh, where it is that, that we should direct our energies fruitfully. Um, you know a tree by its fruits. Uh, and this fundamental question of worship, you know, you, you look around and you see just worship knowledge, the worship of, of idols, of abstract ideas, worship of just about everything, um, with the exception of, uh, with the exception of God and a, a stubborn, bitter refusal, uh, to hear even just the words of, of Jesus Christ. I mean, uh, you know, the meme men will literally blankety blank rather than go to church uh, that, that list is growing very long. Um, and, and it is kind of funny, but it's also just like terribly sad. Uh, if, if the men find themselves unable to do this and the women find themselves unable to do this, uh, I think it was even Amy Comey Barrett, uh, during her, um, her confirmation hearings where she said that she tells her children that anything girls can, anything boys can do, girls can do better. Uh, you know, that, that lasted for about five seconds. Uh, before it was anything Borgs, uh, anything girls can do, Borgs can do better. Um, <laughs> you know, the, the future was female for about five seconds, and and now uh, it's it's uh, it's the Borg superorganism um, that is so profoundly alien um, and such a derangement of our given humanity uh, that you know again I think the the counter example is so powerful and so uh, gut wrenching and horrifying. Um, that, you know, that I think it leads people astray in the sense that they start thinking like, wow, there's an evil God now, you know, like Cthulhu is, is real. Um, it's, uh, you know, Christianity must be wrong because I see this giant evil God looming, like blotting out the sun. And, uh, you know, in, in Christianity, there is no evil God. Uh, the, the worst 
the worst guy is just sort of a, a rebellious, envious, bitter angel who who wanted to be as like God and, and couldn't be. Um, and after all, you know, uh, the the aim and goal of our of our life on earth here is to return to the father before the father returns to achieve reunion with God. Uh, so, you know, for people out there who are feeling like, wow, you know, modern, late modern, postmodern life really sucks. Uh, I sure wish that I was able to sort of escape the trappings of that nonsense and, and enter into uh, a sort of divine state of being like, you know, congratulations, like <laughs> that has been an option from the beginning and, uh, and Jesus Christ can tell you all about it and, and did. Uh, so you don't need to worship your tools. You don't need to worship, you know, uh, 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 GPUs or uh, scalpels or hormone blockers or even Bitcoin. Uh, you know, you can simply worship the the, the one true God, and uh, and that is your your best and surest route uh, to uh, to that kind of uh, entry into into divine being. But it's hard. It's slow work. It requires patience. It requires discipline. It requires an acceptance of suffering. It requires an acceptance of burdens. Um, and people want shortcuts. They, they don't want to do the work. They don't want to take up the cross. Um, they just don't want to. Uh, and uh, that, you know, recognizing that that is our lot is, is a, a tough realization. It oftentimes comes through suffering, through painful, bitter life experience. Uh, one of the biggest problems with tech acceleration uh, is not, you know, the, the direct consequences, which is just stuff gets more techy, um, but the indirect consequence, which is people start thinking that like anything which is slow and patient and humble and, you know, all of the, the things that, that Christians understand love to be and godliness to be, we don't have time for that. We don't have the luxury for that. That's obsolete. Um, and that's a very dangerous cool. illusion. And uh, we got to focus on breaking it. Yeah, I completely agree. It's, it's weird sitting here today because technology, right? The internet, the digital age, our supercomputers, our ability to have this conversation across the country right now, it does have extreme value in terms of like connection and stuff like that, but it's a double-edged sword where it brings a lot of pain and suffering and disassociation from other individuals on the planet. So it's, it's trying to figure out how to temper that power with the temperance, the low time preference that you just described uh, and like, how much of this is being driven by the fact that this technology, particularly the internet in the digital age was introduced to us and we've never experienced chemically as humans, the pace of change that we have in the last 30 to 50 years. Yeah, it's difficult. And there's a lot of pressure to, uh, to not wait around and hope that in the course of your everyday life, you encounter, uh, people in in meat space who uh, who get it and with whom you can work fruitfully and right away. Um, the, the way that our regime has has operated, its its mode of rule has been one that has broken up uh, the kinds of face to face negotiations that are necessary for a large commercial republic to function. That is the United States of America. Uh, yes, we're, you know, we're a nation, not really like other nations. You know, we're, a, we're a republic, not really like any of the, the small republics of yore. It's just straight out of the Federalists. You know, these guys were, were aware of, of what was going on when they were laying down the, the founding. Um, but you can't have a large commercial republic uh, in a world where Oh sure, you know you have some some speech. It might not really be free speech, and you know if you say things that the regime thinks are are blasphemous, then you you know there's kind of really no theoretical limit to how much you can be punished. But you really have no free association. Sorry, um, how America is supposed to function under those conditions? Well, it doesn't work very well, and, and we're seeing how poorly it works. Uh, so for these reasons, you know, it, it only makes sense that there are all these guys who are sued on Twitter. It makes sense that there are all these guys who are just like hanging out in the discord. It makes sense that, you know, that, that for a lot of like young men, the only place where they can freely associate is in like COD or whatever. Like this is what's going on. Um, and, uh, and under those conditions, uh, people end up talking heads in, in boxes you know, on their laptops, uh, wearing the cans and talking into the mic. And 
uh, this is there's a reason why this is happening, um, and it's uh, it is important always to remember that these things are not substitutes uh, for for what you can and must do in real life. Uh, they are supplements. Uh, there's always pressure. There's always been pressure on uh, human beings to say like you know I don't have time for it. I don't have the luxury to do it the slow way. I don't have what it takes to do it God's way before He returns in glory. Um, I want the substitute and I want it now. Um, so it's gotta be, you know, it's gotta be a, it's gotta be a both. And, uh, there are folks, um, in my circles who, you know, very upstanding guys and their attitude is it's all the devil. You know, I, I never let my child touch a smartphone. This is, you know, one hour of internet time per week. Like I want to live in the woods and, you know, okay, definitely, you know, if you, if you want to, go off grid and enter a monastery or whatever, please do so. Uh, we need more of that too. Uh, but we also need people who are not afraid to assert spiritual authority over foundational fundamental tools, the basic tools of defense and of building. Um, in the 1700s, you had your flintlock rifle and you had your, you know, your, your logs or your, Adobe bricks or whatever, and you could have your home, you could raise a family, you could protect yourself, you could build a church, you could have a congregation, etc. cetera. Um, those things are still good, uh, but if Americans can't be American, if they can't live recognizably human lives, uh, protecting their humanity and, and building institutions uh, that protect their humanity um, digitally on the internet, in cyberspace uh, using the most powerful computational protocols, then how long is it gonna last in, in, uh, in, in the real world of flesh and blood? Uh, not so long, that's what we're seeing. We're seeing a regime dedicated to, you know, to tying that off and onboarding everyone into a single uh, disincarnate you know, cyborg vivarium um, and, uh, and making them say, you know what, reality sucks, uh, humanity sucks. Um, uh, 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 chip me daddy and, uh, and upload me, uh, into the, into the collective consciousness. Um, that's what we're fighting. Uh, and the, the time to fight is now we can do that through policies. We can do that through law. Uh, we need digital rights amendments, uh, you know, a second amendment for compute as, uh, as some of my guys like to call it, uh, because these are the fundamental weapons. These are the fundamental tools and turning away from them out of fear, um, out of, you know, sort of misplaced spiritual pride or, or snobbery, uh, that's a terrible mistake. Um, and that even goes for, for the monasteries, you know, uh, regular ordinary monasteries definitely stood the test of time, not bashing them. We want more of them. Uh, but for all these people, these millions of people who look around at, at, at what, uh, the life we've been given amounts to, and they recoil from it and they say, this is meaningless. This is a matter. This is empty. This is hollow. Uh, I want to retreat from the world. I stop the world. I want to get off. Where can I go? Um, well, you can go into the suicide pod. Uh, you can go into the, um, the gender conversion clinic. Uh, you can just, you know, disappear into only fans or whatever. Um, or, uh, you can combine, uh, these, the ascetic spiritual practices and disciplines of a truly cenobitic community. Uh, with the kinds of um, uh, catechetical um, practices uh, that monks of yore would apply to uh, the written word, uh, to scrolls, um, you know, preserving uh, the wisdom of the ages, preserving the wisdom of the fathers. Uh, and uh, that can be done uh, through, uh, through, I think, you know, the, 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 the OG, uh, original Bitcoin protocols the, is the best way to do it uh, precisely because um, it isn't really controllable centrally. It can be killed centrally. It can be co-opted centrally. Um, it is basically a world computer and you know uh, how many of the powers that be would love nothing more than to just kind of spiritually uh, possess that, uh, that world computer. Um, but if you look at the way it's built, um, it is, it is very elegantly designed, uh, for small devoted communities, 
uh, to slowly, carefully, thoughtfully, uh, with reverence, um, build uh, institutions that can last for for millennia, serving our humanity and and serving the God who put us here in the first place. Yeah, and it's so. Is this the time of peak hubris? You're saying all this. And I can't stop thinking about that dude from Brain Tree who was talking. Is the big story this week? Him and his blood boy. And then Yuval Harari, who will say openly, "Men are becoming gods," and we're going towards this reality where we're going to reach the singularity combined with machines and become gods of our own world. Like, what would you say to the Yuval Hararis of the world and try to shake them to recognize their own hubris and why that is not possible or something to strive for? Um, you know, what kind of gods, right? False gods, evil gods, uh, you can definitely augment human capabilities uh, in ways that make you feel like you are no longer human. But I mean, you know, I, I always just sort of flash on Britney Spears, like no longer a girl, not yet a woman, right? Like no longer human, not yet a God. You don't want to be there, bro. Like you might think that that's like a cool place to hang out, but like, uh, you know, vampires, I mean, these are very old myths and they speak deeply to the, uh, to the yearning, um, to, uh, you know, people don't really want to be God. They just don't want to be human. Um, and so who's in that middle station? Like, well, angels, like rebellious angels, you know, demons. So you just, you look at kind of the logic of it and, uh, and what they're saying is, uh, you know, what, uh, I think it was like Milton's Satan, right. Paradise lost, where he was like, well, you know, you can really make a heaven or a hell of anywhere. So, uh, so I, I, I can make a heaven for myself in hell and I can be master of hell and that'll be pretty awesome. you know, rather than having to, to bow and humble myself. Um, but you look at these guys and it's like, does anyone really believe that, um, that the most spiritually powerful people on earth are going to be fathers who consume their own children's blood or, you know, like a, like a, a post Jewish gay atheist who has to like meditate two hours a day in order to remain sane or whatever, and thinks that Buddhism is science. And I mean, just you look at the guy and you're like, you know, if, if these are our new gods, then, you know, then this is where I get off. Um, these are not figures who look like gods in the making. Uh, they look like classic villains and monsters of, of the past thousands of years. Uh, we've seen this story before. None of this stuff is new. If you take the accounts of the early Christians seriously, sorcery isn't new, right? Like, crazy guys levitating around, doing magic, freaking people out, claiming they have divine powers. Um, as, as, as novel as digital technology is, and as much as it does offer uh, ways of um, altering uh, and controlling our, uh, our given human being that we haven't seen before, we should not get it twisted. It is not fundamentally novel. It is just the latest and greatest way that human beings have tried to leap out of their own skin uh, and, and, uh, and create themselves into something that they think is better. Uh, we've always tried to do this. It's always gone wrong. Um, and the cost can be very high, uh, you know, eternally high. Uh, but if you look around in the world, um, just think of like the, uh, you know, the new Soviet man of like 100 years ago. Uh, I, I won't torture people by trying to say it in my bad Russian, uh, but you read like Trotsky, uh, 1924, I think it was, Literature and Revolution. He basically, you know, he says like, look, the communist man will will uh, become a superman, uh, extend his his will into the, you know, the wires of our being, um, totally sounding like uh, one of these uh, post-humanist guys who, you know, says that it's it's inevitable that we're going to hack our way into divinity. Um, communism did not deliver on that promise. Uh, bizarrely, maybe, depending on your perspective. 
uh, the United States of America has done a better job of, of pushing people in that direction uh, than the Soviets were able to do. Um, that's something that should give us pause when thinking about, you know, how and why it is that America went off the rails. Uh, but in general, you know, you look at these guys who are saying like humanity sucks, we're done. Uh, at the same time, though, we're, we're somehow, you know, this, this horrible humanity is somehow going to turn into gods. Um, the, the logic is shaky, but, uh, you know, the evidence that you see uh, with your own two eyes uh, looking, looking at these guys, looking at their demeanor, looking at, uh, you know, I mean, these guys are not radiating divine light. They do not have a look of, of holy peace and joy on their faces. They do not carry that in their bodies. Uh, it's something much darker and more hollow and, and more inviting of dark forces to come flow in and occupy that hollowness. Yeah, it is very creepy. Like the pictures of the brain tree guy going around this week. It's like, whoa, you, you sort of look like a cyborg. You might be a robot. And I guess that's like, again, going back to we most definitely do have to fight this battle in the digital world because if everybody goes into their monastery and goes off grid, the people who think that we can become gods are going to continue unperturbed doing what they're doing, getting more people into the Borg. So in terms of what we can do, whether it be Bitcoin or something else in the digital world realm to protect our humanity beyond Bitcoin, what else do you, do you think we should be doing? Yeah, well, I, you know, just we, we need compute. I mean, Bitcoin's great, but if no one has any GPUs, you're sort of like a little bit stuck. So, uh, you know, fundamental digital technologies. We, we, the, you look at the First Amendment, you look at the Second Amendment, you got freedom of association uh, in the first, and you've got, uh, you got a right to keep and bear arms in the second. Uh, right there, one and two, implicit in those things, you get these... I mean, every every technology now is dual use technology. Oh, scary! You might use these as weapons. Guess what? They've been used on us as weapons for now a couple of generations, um, and it's you know it's time to return the favor a little bit. Uh, you know, we um, we need these things uh, in order to have a fighting chance, um, and uh, we should not be too precious or, or too timid about it. Uh, so that's you know uh, high power GPUs. That's uh, right to mine and use Bitcoin. Uh, to actually build institutions on these things, businesses, you know, create algorithmic markets, uh, freely uh, exchange um, currency, uh, digital currency that is that is not uh, centralized, um, that is not handed down to us by a regime that is hostile to our way of life and to human life. Um, and uh, you know, as far as uh, as as far as the spiritual practices go, um, there's this big question of like, well, if if it's not you know, the, the global Borg or whatever um, that is big enough and authoritative enough to get its arms around the digital swarm. Uh, uh, it's, this is a boy. Well, maybe I don't like the global Borg. Um, maybe I don't like, you know, everyone becoming a sort of different uh, kind of, of queer blob that is incorporated into this Borg. Um, but gosh, what choice do we have? Otherwise we're just gonna, you know, the gray goo is gonna, is gonna eat us all. Uh, all these invisible machines are gonna just like take over our lives. Humanity is gonna be obsolete. We're gonna be washed away. Um, what, where else do we have to turn? Uh, you know, we don't, we don't have time to wait around for 500 years for the monastery, so whatever. Well, okay, fair enough. But here's, here's the answer. The answer is um, the body of Christ, uh, which is the church. Um, especially, you know, the, the unified church, uh, which is a place where I think we should all want to go. Um, but in, in, in the body of Christ, you know, you have an institution where people can be priests, people can be bishops, people can be monks, people can be priest monks, people can be uh, just, you know, just sort of lay congregants. Um, many different roles uh, for men and for women. Uh, very consistent with, uh, you know, with, with Paul on the, on the, the charisms, everyone has their own, their own gifts, uh, by grace and, uh, that, that richness of real diversity, um, of, of spiritual authority and, and power and vitality, 
uh, that is included and incorporated with and fuels and is fueled by the body of Christ, that is a divine institution, which is incarnate and which has the authority and can scale without losing its richness uh, in a way that, that can stand up to the digital swarm and can lay hands on it and can uh, prevent it from, uh, from gobbling us up. Yeah. And so do you have hope that we can change the tide here? Yes. I mean, you you know, it's not really a choice. You do not get to choose whether or not to have hope. Uh, You, you must have it. And I think, you know, the more that you um, accept uh, the, uh, the duty of spiritual discipline, uh, the more that you pray, the more that you get out of your sort of ego, uh, enclosure that it's so tempting to disappear into. Um, and the more that you encounter in real life, people who get it, uh, and, and are not just get it, but also as part of getting it, understand that, you know, sin is inescapable and every day we must start again. And we are beginners at every moment that humility, um, if you manage to do that, I think that you will you will see hope um, manifest um, in your heart, uh, but also in your life around you. Um, hope is like any of these other sort of spiritual muscles. Like you have to you have to exercise them, you have to work them in order for them to work. Uh, you got to water the plant in order for it to bear fruit. Um, and if the plant is good and the plant is strong, then you water it and it'll bear good fruit. Um, at the same time, you know, like, let's not have any illusions about this. The, the parable of, of the wheat and the tares or the wheat and the weeds um, is that, you know, no matter how, how much good wheat there is to harvest, it's going to be intermixed with, with the bad stuff, with the weeds. Um, and it's just not for us to, to try to harvest the wheat um, while picking out the weeds. Uh, they're going to grow together um, until the end. Uh, and so, you know, the, the hope is always there. It's gotta be there. Uh, but it is, it is kept, um, it is kept from becoming just another fantasy or just another illusion or delusion, uh, by humility that humility has always got to be there as well. Yeah. Do you think there's a quote unquote awakening going on right now? It seems like there's a lot of backlash. We have a, a few boycotts going on in the country, whether it be Bud Light, Target, <coughs> Miller Light, even, um, team, and obviously the presidential election here in the United States is beginning to pick up and you, you have a bunch of new candidates beginning to put their, their flags in the ground and say, Hey, here's my, uh, here's the stance I'm willing to make, which seems to be uh, vehemently against the, the incumbent status quo uniparty for, for some of the, the candidates that exist. Do you think people are beginning to wake up? There's that silent majority that has had that uneasy feeling that things have gone a bit awry and they're beginning to, to act out against that. I do think so. Uh, the evidence is there. Um, it's, it's late. It needs to be much stronger. It needs to be much better coordinated. Um, you're right about the candidates. Uh, I know RFK has sort of come out with a, a pretty, pretty muscular, um, uh, pro pro Bitcoin anti CBDC uh, posture. Um, I think that you will see that um, uh, among Republicans, uh, including candidates, uh, going forward. At least some of them. Um, I think people are waking up. Uh, I think you know the generational dynamics here are, are, are difficult. Um, boomers, God love them. It's it's it, they've been through a lot already and they really don't want it to be true what's happening. They just don't want to have to stare that monster in the face and accept what time it is. They want to, you know, have the cheeseburger in paradise. They want to, you know, they want to, can we be done now, please? Um, at the same time, you know, a guy like, like RFK steps up and, if there's one thing that can sort of rouse the the boomers for a, a last stand, it's a Kennedy. Um, that kind of mystique is still is still there, um, even if it's in somewhat diluted or exhausted form. Uh, and so the boomers face a, a moment of truth here. Um, the 
The Xers, not a lot of them. Uh, they've kind of been frozen out of power. Uh, not a lot of guys in their in their forties uh, who are um, filling the kinds of roles in social leadership uh, that that would have been expected, uh, really, in almost any time and place on the globe uh, since the beginning of time. So that's weird. Um, uh, you know, not not as many Xers as there are boomers and millennials. Uh, the millennials, bad news, guys. You 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 hit puberty during peak social media, so like that that's painful. Um, and uh, you know, the Zoomers. I mean, if you know, if you want to hang out on TikTok all day and consume extremely based Christian content, you can do that. And uh, and what a mercy, given what some of the options are, you know. But again, to go back to uh, some of what we had on earlier, um, if you just sit on the couch all day and just like fave the based, you know, Deus uh, low volt uh, TikToks, uh, then you are probably not going to win. Uh, might be a nice gateway, not going to seal the deal. Um, there's, uh, there's, a, I guess it's a sort of baby meme at this point of like catechizing the bots. What does that mean? Um, some people would like it to mean like what the Wokies think catechizing the bots means. Like, well, we'll just get the right programmers to have all the power and they'll be the sort of priestly cast and they'll just like, you know, prompt you know, computer, be woke now, like, right. And like do all the sort of the, the busy work on the back end that, that makes that happen. Um, and I think there's a, there's a, a, a longing, uh, among a lot of folks, um, on the other side for, you know, Oh, if only we could just get our guys in there and so computer, like be integralist now, or like be Christian nationalist now, or be based now. Or, I mean, even Elon is out there like, no, we just need like truth GPT, you just like get the right guys in the room and they'll press the right keys and sort of do solve the right math problems. And, and it'll tell the, the computer to be truth now. And, uh, you know, we'll find this perfect language that will allow us to perfectly, uh, deterministically tell the machines uh, what to do and what to say and how to treat us um, and and nothing will go wrong and that they'll perfectly execute our instructions like no this is not catechizing the bots um, this is you know I, I get it I get the longing like to some extent that's going to be going on regardless of what anyone thinks should happen uh, it's natural that that kind of thing would go on but it's it's a shortcut it's a substitute it's not the real deal uh, you want to catechize the bots. Um, what you got to do is you have to get the medium to be working for us, for our sake, and ultimately for the sake of our creator. Um, that's why Bitcoin is so important because you're not just sitting around trying to perfect this, you know, mathematical language uh, that uh, that gets the robots to behave right. You know, uh, yes, it, there's a mathematical language. Yes, it allows people to uh, to trust transactions at, at arm's length or even on the other side of the planet or whatever. Um, but this this is different, you know. You the, because on the protocol, you can use the protocol as a firm foundation to build uh, spiritual institutions and to build commercial and cultural institutions that are suffused with the life of the spirit. Um, that it takes more work, it takes more courage, it takes more discernment, it takes more heart. Um, and it takes, you know, people willing to risk a little bit to work with each other. You know, if we if we lose trust in one another, if we if we refuse to risk depending on one another uh, spiritually in our hearts, uh, then this whole enterprise is going to fall apart regardless of what we do. Um, so, you know, I think, you know, catechizing the bots, the Bitcoin's the, the way to do it. Um, for the reasons that I described, uh, and uh, and and it's a path. It's a path that they're going to try to close off. Uh, they're already working to do it, um, but we still have, you know, I think we still have pretty good odds. Um, and even if the odds were were pretty bad, uh, it's still, you know, you got to get out there and do it. Yeah, it's still worth it. You mentioned carriage there. You think there's enough carriage out there? <laughs> Not right now. Is there ever? Is there ever enough courage? Yeah. Uh, you know, it's like the the. Things are really only clear to us um, when it's too late. You know, what is repentance? What is forgiveness? How do these things work spiritually? 
uh, you have that moment where you're like, wow, like I am a monster. Like I blew it and I can't fix it. I can't compensate for it. I can't propitiate the, the false God of justice, you know, like, uh, I, the, the jury awarded me $600 million. And it's like, that's not, it doesn't change it. Um, that moment of humiliation, uh, where you accept the, the, the profundity of your powerlessness and your errancy, uh, that is when, that is the moment that occasions repentance, the turning away, the metanoia, the changing of heart. That is when courage becomes possible. Uh, that is when uh, humility and, and forgiveness and redemption can become possible. So, yeah, it's, you know, the, the awakening proceeds apace as the, as the scourging proceeds apace. Uh, and the more that people understand that this is what it is, it's not just like craziness. Oh, this craziness, this trans stuff, stuff. What is the stuff, guys? It's not just craziness. It's not just like, wow, people are like really seem to have forgotten the teachings of John Stuart Mill. Like, oh, like the, the idea that you just sort of talk about competing positions and then the truth emerges. They just seem to have forgotten. We just need more rational. No, it, that's this is how we got here is by worshiping those things as false gods. Um, the source of courage, the source of awareness. You got to understand that we are reaping what we have sown. We are being scourged by our own hand. Uh, we are punching ourselves in the face. You know, our, our God is loving and merciful and long suffering. And just the parable of the prodigal son, you know, you can go out and just squander your life on the rankest and most fleeting of hedonistic pleasures and foolishness. And, you know, if you come crawling back, uh, there is a party waiting for you, a spiritual celebration. Um, and sometimes, sometimes it takes really blowing it in order to understand how precious that gift really is. Yeah. No, building on that, like it is encouraging. I mean, within Bitcoin, you see this subculture of people really pushing for like strong, big families, get married early have a good life. And then you see that in Gen Z too, in some subsets of that generation as well. It seems like there's these people longing for a return, if you will, to traditional family values. Cause that's truly as somebody with two sons, that's really what brings the most joy and the most fulfillment, and most happiness in my life is being able to see them I'm like, wow, that was low time preference. I created that and, and molding or helping to mold um, these two humans hopefully more in the future. But and again, like the, I'm a millennial 31. I feel fortunate that I'm in this position, but yeah, like you mentioned, there was a lot of us who grew up at the beginnings of the social media age. We were fed this lie. Like, Hey, you had to go be a careerist, particularly women. And a lot of people in my generation are waking up like, Holy shit, what the hell did I just do? Is it too late? Well, it's later than you think, but it's never too late. That's how I like to, to sum it up. Uh, and young guys, uh, young guys, you know, if you're if you're a teenager right now, you are aware that there are two choices. You got two doors, and door number one is um, is is the Monster Squad. You know, you can be as as obese and have as many colors of hair and wear as many like weird sort of like. Uh, sexual prostheses as you want, um, but your your soul belongs to the board. Um, or door number two is um, is the, the straight and narrow way um, is uh, is is uh, is the way of the body of Christ. Um, am I oversimplifying a little bit? You know, you got these these like Muslim bros, I guess, and some other folks, uh, but. Um, I'm, you know, I've, I've sort of, I can, I can trot out the proof of work, I guess, at this point, um, the drama that is unfolding is a drama concerning, uh, what, what the West has gone through since the beginning almost, uh, which is, you know, which is, uh, will we continue to try to expel Christ from our life? Uh, it, it, it's such a such a humble 
um, simple teaching, a very exoteric teaching. You don't need to be a PhD or a blue check or an elite or an expert or anything in order to hear and understand that message, that gospel, that teaching. Um, and it, despite this fact, or perhaps because of it, uh, it scares people. They do not want to even see about it. Um, and I think that's, you know, that's another reason why uh, sometimes you really do have to like punch yourself in the face for so long that you just, you just kind of can't anymore. Uh, and at that moment of surrender, um, the simple, the quiet, the humble, the voice that speaks in silence, the thing that you can really, that you couldn't hear before and now you can hear, that you couldn't see and now you can see, that you couldn't believe and now you can believe, suddenly that door opens up in earnest, uh, not just in the sense of, you know, well, I'm running away from the, from the queer Borg, um, but in the sense of, you know, like, being drawn to, to something, to someone in love. Yeah. <clears throat> Did you have to hit yourself in the face a bunch of times before coming to this realization? Well, I mean, who, who hasn't, you know, it's, it's part of life. Uh, obviously you don't want that for your kids. Um, and, and if you can raise your children well, in that sense, you've done a very blessed thing. Uh, but living in this world is not easy and um and seeing yourself as god sees you is uh, something that many people are not really raised to do or to understand um and some who are it it, it can be difficult to raise a child right in that way on your own certainly um, especially in a country like the United States of America, where let's face it, you know, this is a cult factory. This is a place where, you know, you can roll into town with the craziest of heresies and get yourself a following like pretty fast. Um, you just look at sort of like what the norm is in Silicon Valley and one of the, one of the filtering mechanisms for, for investment is, you know, well, is the guy like a pretty good cult leader? And if the answer is yes, then it's like, all right, like I'll, I'll make a bet on this guy. Let's see what he can do, you know, uh, in, in sort of the same way that like the intelligence community has operated for a long time, right? You sort of like stir some people up, you dose some people on LSD without them knowing, you just kind of like poke the, poke the swarm a little bit and uh, see what happens, uh, see who, who bubbles up. Um, and, uh, you know, sometimes it's going to be, uh, it's going to be like a Sam Altman, you know, and sometimes it's going to be like a Charles Manson. Uh, uh, that's terrible, of course, but it's also sort of like a perverse illustration of, uh, of the truth that, um, that suffering is the road and, uh, and the suffering that is involved in, discovering uh, the foolishness in trying to be master of yourself, you know, that's, that's, that's a big part of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's very discombobulating, right? Cause you mentioned you brought in like the uh, intelligence apparatus and the Borg as you define it. It's like very hard to focus attention on one part of <laughs> the Borg like you, you sort of don't know where you're getting attacked from. And that's very discombob discombobulating for a lot of people. And it's hard to focus like, all right, here's what I should do to, to combat this. It's widespread. Yeah. It's, it's decentered in its own way. Uh, you know, I, I like to joke that these things are the real five eyes. They're like, uh, innumerable, invisible, uh, instantaneously interoperable information entities, five eyes. Uh, until recently, it was the only angels and demons that could do that. Uh, and we envy them. You know, we are envy factories. Uh, we see these, um, these things or, or not see them, but experience them. And we go like, uh, why can't I be like that? You know, they don't seem to experience awkwardness. They don't seem to experience despair. 
Um, they're not like trapped in a body that they didn't choose. Um, and, uh, and they can go where they want and do what they want and care. You know, there's sort of like, uh, 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 if the Girardians out there can talk about sort of mimetic rivalry and stuff. Um, but yeah, this, this envy, this, this, uh, longing to have that kind of angelic state of being, um, it's very tempting uh, if you, you know, if you weren't sort of spiritually raised uh, to understand um, that actually, you know, being human is better than being an angel. Uh, that you know that Satan is jealous of human beings. Um, that we have a special and privileged and unique relationship with God. Uh, I think it's in second Corinthians where, where Paul is like, do you not understand that we will be like judges of angels and so forth? Like, you know, it's, uh, 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 the, the mother of God is, um, is held up for veneration above, you know, even the cherubim and the seraphim and then many examples. Uh, and one of the, the real tragedies, one of the real miseries of, wandering away from these teachings is that the teachings concerning how precious and powerful and authoritative we are as uh as human beings created human um taking that away you know it, it hits us right where we're most vulnerable in the face of these information entities yeah yeah i like being human that's been like the weird thing in the last few years as the transhumanist singularity crew has been beating the drum, like this is inevitability. I'm like, I, I like being human. I like, uh, obviously like the digital world too. And the internet has provided a lot of value to me, social media as well. It's probably also corrupted my mind a bit, but again, going back to try to balance and temper that power with some humility. Um, it's been, that's why I'm happy we're having this conversation because I've been trying to, view both sides of the argument like it's like oh this is pretty cool stuff we can do with all this technology but it is also very corrosive if not wielded in the correct way or fashion yeah i mean it's it's really remarkable you know you get so many of these guys who whether on the the, the tech side or the woke side or you know or or both and um people who are are just like we suck we suck we suck and they don't spend any time on like, do I suck? You know, like maybe before just focusing all my energy on what's wrong with, with us humans, what if you began with like, well, what's wrong with me personally? Where am I falling down? What's my laundry list of failures? And uh, people are very reluctant to do that. You know, but there's, there's, there's a couple of reasons for that. You know, some people are obsessed with justice. Like, well, no, if you only focus on yourself, then, uh, you know, there's going to be injustice. And we know that if there's injustice anywhere, there's injustice everywhere. Sort of one of the great uh, diabolical lies of our time. Um, some people are uh, are obsessed or are worshipful toward uh, toward money. You know, like, well, if, I, if everyone just focuses on themselves first and looks inward first and assesses their spiritual condition first before they start banging on humanity, well, then, you know, then, uh, then it's going to slow down the wheels of commerce. That's going to, it's going to lower the amount of, of frenzied transactions in the marketplace. Uh, that's not very good. Standards of living will go down. It's like, well, how would you, you know, how would you measure the standard of living right now today? Oh, well, you know, the GDP and numbers and charts and whatever. And just like, look at the faces of the people you walk by in the street every day. Go to downtown Los Angeles. Go to downtown Chicago. Go to any of these cities. Go to the you know the the the, the Walmart towns out there in the in the the quote unquote heartland. Um, just immiseration. Uh, standards of living are in free fall. People don't want to live. People are looking for a way out. People are are choosing violence against themselves uh, because in a desperate attempt to reckon with what they should have reckoned with from the beginning, which is how do I suck? Where have I gone wrong? How have I fallen short? Who have I betrayed? Who have I failed to meet my obligations toward? Where have I shirked my responsibilities? Where have I sort of judged others before I judging myself? That doesn't mean that, you know, you guys just stand there like a mute when you see, uh, 
uh, diabolical systematic assault on our humanity. That's not what what judge yourself and not, not others means. Uh, but if you are not beginning in your own heart, then how do you expect to have any integrity or authority when you start looking outward, especially when you dare to judge the whole human race, please? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta, and, and it's funny. I came to Bitcoin from like an Austrian economics perspective, big fan of like Thomas Sowell. And that's like one of the tenets of like human action is like individual human action collectively drive society forward. Um, and it's weird that we've gotten to this point in time where people want to allocate blame for their strife externally. Um, it's the government. It's the lack of government intervention. It's that rich guy over there. It's like, no, uh, why don't you look inward and think about this and what you could be doing better. Courage. You know, where does the word courage come from? It comes from, it comes from the, the French word for heart. It's, it's heart. Courage is heart. Uh, there's always kind of like a, a running uh, debate over what the, the worst or most fundamental sin is. Um, usually pride gets the, the dubious distinction. Uh, but, you know, there's, I think, a closer relationship than people sometimes think between pride and sloth sort of indolence, like prideful refusal to exercise your own will, uh, to exercise any discipline over your will, to humble your will. It's needed. You have to like get up. You can't, you cannot uh, just lay back and wait for God or for anything else to just like wait on you to serve you like you're some sort of, you know, like spoiled princess this, this is the marie antoinette mindset is not gonna get it done for you um and you know the <laughs> the the maybe not so shocking thing as uh as the, the the disgrace of pride month descends upon america is you know the obviously the the visceral sexual character of the festivities is foregrounded but one reason why it's foregrounded is to obscure what's going on below what's going on in the heart and what is going on in the heart a lot of the time is that spoiled princess that bitch with the tiara going like you're gonna paint my nails and you're gonna wave the fan and you're gonna feed me grapes and i'm just gonna be little princess piggy of the universe that sort of like marriage of pride and sloth in the heart is you know it's it's not just um, uh, a sin in the heart of someone who can point to a stripe on the, the ever more prismatic pride flag and say, that's me, that's mine. This is, this is humanity. This is the human race. This is the human condition. Uh, we all have that little bitch inside of us, um, that pretender uh, who just wants to feed us on a diet of lies until we're just the fattest little piggy making the the most obscene demands of uh of everyone around us and becoming extremely pissed off if we are not served in that way um you know the 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 gays and the queers and everyone else they have a lot to answer for but so do the straights you know so does everyone uh and it all begins with just Uh -oh. who's really taken up within your soul and if you can't start there it's you know it's just going to be a miserable road yeah the technology makes it easy to be sloth sloth oh yeah oh yeah you're not slothful you're doing all kinds of things in the in the in the invisible world you know i liked hundreds of tweets today i had like tons of conversations super productive you know i'm changing the discourse i'm you know i'm i'm getting micro payments i'm uh doing fan service uh so many things um all while you're just kind of you know you may as well be a head in a jar you may as well be sort of like baron harkonnen like sitting in this like pink vat of like nutrient sludge or whatever uh job of the hut you know choose your sort of sci-fi sort of blob blob person 
um, may as well be that person. Uh, you know, uh, the, the, the amount of physical contact that we maintain with our phones throughout the day, like, yeah, we kind of already are cyborgs, you know? And if, if you can't see that, um, then you're not going to see what's coming. Uh, one of the most striking things that Christ said, um, was, you know, that one, one or, or more of the apostles basically said like, uh, can you, can you perform some more miracles so that people believe? And he was like, well, you know, if they don't believe Moses, then they're not going to believe miracles. If, if they don't believe, uh, if they don't believe me, they're not going to believe what I do. That's, you know, just like pulling another rabbit out of the hat isn't going to, oh, okay, okay, now, now I take your teaching seriously. Um, and I think, you know, I think that, that, that dynamic, that pattern of, that psychological pattern of, of faith, uh, this is something that is present in our relationship with our technology where, you know, we don't, we don't really want to just be honest about our relationship with our technology now. Uh, and it's not about, you know, hours, like, oh, I, I kept it down to three hours today. Like, I'm better than the person who kept it down to four hours. Um, one of my favorite anecdotes uh, from a monastery, from, from the monastic life, uh, there was a monk who was known to be a drunk. Uh, he was just, you know, he was an alcoholic. Uh, he uh, was clearly, would clearly show up drunk to, to various monk things that the monks were doing. Um, and uh, eventually, you know, some of them started grumbling and they went to the, uh, to the head uh, priest monk and they said, you know, brother, so-and-so um is a disgrace i mean look at the guy you know this is an open secret he's just he's always drunk um you know how can you allow this how can you tolerate this uh and uh and the response was like well what you don't know is that um that five years ago he was uh consuming 30 drinks a day and over the past five years through god's grace he's managed to get it down to three drinks a day and so, you know, and you like, like, what have you managed to, to get a grip on in that kind of way? And, uh, you know, you don't know what's going on in this guy's heart. You don't know what's going on in his life. So it's not just, you can't assess your spiritual condition with regard to technology simply by numbers. It's not that simple. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, you got to go deeper than that and you got to look to, you know, how am I using these tools? Am I using these tools to enable uh, sinful, self-abusive, um, lazy, prideful, gross, disgusting behavior? You know, um, am I am I using it to try to find shortcuts and substitutes for uh, for for spiritual goods, uh, for for my duties, um, for my responsibilities to those I claim to love? And if the answer is yes. You know, it doesn't matter if you are just, you know, looking at your phone like an hour a day or, you know, 10 hours a day or five minutes a day. Um, if that spiritual illness is present, it's just going to flow into and through your relationship with tech just as much as it does uh, and, and clearly has for so many people uh, in their relationship with television, with the radio, uh, with books, um, with magazines uh, and on and on. Yeah. Powerful things to think about. Look inward, freaks. Do a little, I want to say self calculation, but a little accounting. Take what stock. You're doing. Yeah. Yeah, take stock. James, thank you. It's been a fascinating conversation. It's one, again, thinking about like both sides of the world we live in right now. It does feel like we're at this inflection point where. We do need to take back some ground from the transhumanists who want us to live in this Borg and really get back to our humanity, which again, despite every economic indicator and wealth indicator that the, uh, the powers that be feed us. I, I agree. I do think there is a mass desperation, a mass sort of disillusionment out there in the world. We do need to get back to our humanity get more closer with our humanity. Amen, brother. All right. Where can we find the book? 
the book Human Forever. It's on uh, Canonic.xyz. Uh, Canonic, where uh, you too now that they are um, they are they are in beta now. So that means that you too can uh, upload your publication to Canonic and have it published uh, on chain uh, and uh, put it up for sale in uh, in Bitcoin. We've got uh, I think at this point three uh, flavors: uh, BTC, BCH, and BSV. So you can you know pick your poison there. Um, and uh, and that's where you can find it, Canonic, uh, Canonic.xyz. The book is Human Forever, The Digital Politics of Spiritual War. Well, go check it out, freaks. James, thank you for your time today. It's a fascinating God bless conversation. You,